So this section is going to be on inverse functions and most importantly, logarithmic functions. So first, let's talk about inverse functions. First off, you need to have a function that's what we call one-to-one. -one. A function that is one-to-one -one, um, has some certain properties. The main property is, is that for every x, a function is for every x there's only one y. And if one to one function is for every y, there's only one x. So the definition really is functions where for every y, there is one one and only one x. The most important thing about one-to-one -one functions is that one-to-one -one functions have inverses. So if y equals f of x, then that's basically saying that the, we took y and we ran it through the inverse, we get back x. And so one-to-one -one Functions have inverses. Once we have that, we can talk about what we call the cancellation equations. These equations allow you to take a function and its inverse and compose them. So if f is a function, and f inverse is the inverse function. Then if I took f and I composed it with f inverse, I would get back what I started with. So I started with x, I ran it through the inverse, I then ran it back through the function, I would get x back. And this is for all x, in the domain of F inverse. Similarly, F inverse of F of X, if I take a function, an X and run it through a function and then run it through the inverse, I should get X back for all X. in the domain of F inverse. So let's just try an example, a couple of examples. Let's go ahead and find the inverse. Let's say we had the function y equals F of X cubed plus four. I'll go ahead and normally we actually call this F of X equals X cubed, five X cubed plus four. But we like to have y's and x's, we don't like to play around with the f so often. So we will go ahead with the y equals f of 5x cubed plus 4. And what I want to do is I want to find the inverse. Now a lot of times what is suggested we do is that we actually um, switch the x and the y. So we're going to go ahead and start with it, but I will say that you don't always do that. There's reasons why we don't do that. A lot of times it's because the letters mean something, in which case you don't want to switch them. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and switch them because we like to see x as the independent and y as the dependent. So I'm going to make x where y was and y where x was. Now all I do is solve for y. So I just get y by itself. And then that would give me that y is the cube root of x minus four over top of five. And that is my inverse as a function of x. 
Another function I could do is d equals 32t squared. Now, in reality, this is not one to one. If I were to graph up a 32t uh, squared, I would get a parabola. So I would get a graph that looks like this, which means for every x, there's more, for every y, there's two x's. So it doesn't pass what we call the horizontal line test. It passes the vertical line test because it's a function, but it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So in this case, it's not actually working, but I will notice that I use D and T. So this actually comes to us from physics. D is actually the distance, and T is the time. Well, distance can't be negative. Time can't be negative. So we can actually change this function a little bit and what we do, we're gonna restrict the domain. So the restricted domain is where T has to be greater than or equal to zero. It means we're only on this half of the curve and that half of the curve is one to one. And the reason I do that is because if T is time, time can't be negative. So we're going to make sure that time is greater than or equal to zero. That being the case, I can now find the inverse. So a lot of times when we don't have inverses, we do what we call restricted domain. So we can make it one to one, and then we can work through it. Well, the problem with this one is that um, I don't want to switch the D and the T because the D stands for distance and the T stands for time. What I am going to do is just solve for T. So I'm just going to take this equation, get t by itself, and then t is equal to the square root of d over 32. Now I didn't need the plus or minus because I already said t is greater than or equal to zero. So I don't need to put the plus or minus when I take the square root of both sides because I restricted my domain down. So here is my inverse function for this example. 